Good morning, welcome to day eight of Vlogmas. So it's Friday the 8th of December and it's actually a really lovely day here today in the south of England, which is nice. Um, the sun is shining and the skies are blue, which makes a very welcome change from yesterday where we had grey skies all day and it was quite rainy throughout the day as well. And if you watched my day seven video yesterday, I think I finished off I'm hoping that it wouldn't be too rainy or for school pickup when I went up to collect my children, but it did rain. Um, I took umbrellas, so we didn't get too wet, but it was quite a damp pickup and just generally quite a gloomy day. So I'm really enjoying the sunlight today. It's, it's been streaming through this window in the front room, actually, so I've had to close the curtains slightly um, so it wasn't right in my face. But um, yeah, it's nice to have the brighter weather today. So it's about quarter past ten in the morning here right now. And I've been up at the school again this morning. It's been quite a busy week on the school front. This morning it was for the Friday assembly at school where they celebrate um, children in each class. Every week two children are picked from each class for a sort of head teacher's award for doing something special that week. And this week my son got picked so it was really nice to go along and surprise him. We hadn't told him we'd be there before. He was very pleased to get an award particularly because my daughter has already got one earlier in the term so I think yeah he was yeah, quite hoping he'd get one um, sooner rather than later. So yeah, it was really nice to go along and clap him and all the other children and sort of celebrate what they've been up to this week. And I took a picture of him um, there this morning. So I'll pop it up here. He's wearing a Christmas jumper because this afternoon they're doing a carol concert for the parents his year are. So um, they're allowed to wear Christmas jumpers at school today. It's a shop bought Christmas jumper, but he is wearing it with some handmade joggers, which I made him. These are his PE joggers because he had done PE today and um, I made them using my favourite pattern for him for joggers, the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Bias, which I've made so many times for him, both out of school and also for his school PE kit. So the pair today I made in royal blue, which is the school PE kit colour. It's a French terry fabric, so quite nice and lightweight so he doesn't get too hot. Um, he loves wearing the Hudson pants both in and out of school. So yeah, I was glad to see he had something handmade on today when I took that photograph. But yeah, it was really nice to go up to school for that assembly this morning. But now I'm back home and I thought I'd pop on and share what Elf is up to in the night and what I'm wearing today for my handmade wardrobe and a few other things as usual. So I'll start off with Elf. And this morning when we came down, we found Elf in our front room and he'd set up what looked like a little board game club. So he'd invited lots of toys along clearly and had set up loads of different board games for them all to play. So they had out um, a lot of the classics, drafts, snakes and ladders, Scrabble, Connect Four, the game of life, all sorts. And a lot of the teddies were midway through their game. So we must have interrupted them in their playing. Um, and we found Elf playing the game of life with three other teddies. And I'll put a little close up so you can see what he was up to. It didn't look like he was playing entirely fairly because as you'll see, he seemed to have given himself quite a lot more money than any of the other teddies had. So he was a bit of a cheeky elf there, but it was a nice way to start the day because my son and my husband played a couple of games of drafts together and my daughter helped a few of the other teddies complete their games. So yeah, it was a nice way to start the morning with a little board game club. And then in terms of what I'm wearing today, well, I've got quite an old dress on today. Actually, it's quite an old make and I made it using this pattern here. Um, the indigo dress and smock pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. So I think this has been quite a popular pattern since it was released um, a few years ago now. And it's one I wasn't sure about when it was released, but then I saw so many lovely versions. I decided to give it a go and actually I really loved it and I love my versions. So I'll show you the line drawings. It's for quite a relaxed fit smock dress that you can pull on over your head. So there are no like, zips or fastenings. Then it's got this sort of gently curved waistline and um, which is like an empire waistline so it's, it's just a bit above your natural waist and it's got bust darts and then you can either add on a gathered skirt or like a shorter gathered sort of tier to make it into more of a smock length rather than a dress length and there are a couple of little extra details you can add you can either make quite a simple straight sleeve that finishes like a bracelet length or you can add on this little extra ruffly sleeve bit and you can also add these little ruffles into the seams of both the bodice and the sleeve as well so that's quite a nice pretty detail and it's got a good size range to the indigo there is a uk 6 to 24 range and also a um, 16 to 34 size range too but yeah it's one of those patterns that i wasn't sure about it at first but i do really enjoy wearing my versions and when i got the pattern 
I like my first version. I enjoyed saying it so much. I made a couple more versions in quite quick succession and then haven't made any more since. So all of my indigo dresses are quite old now. And then this version here, I think is my most recent make, but it's still pretty old. Um, I thought I'd make quite a nice Christmassy, cosy, cosy winter version. So I made it in this lovely fabric. It is a brushed viscose fabric. I think it's a viscose twill because um, you can see the sort of, hopefully you can see there the sort of twill weave of it. So I think it's a brushed viscose twill fabric. And this lovely sort of check in a sort of, I think it's a black and a dark green colour. Um, and yeah, I got this fabric from Stone Fabrics, who I haven't bought a lot of fabric from actually, but yeah, I really like the look of this one. Um, I will link them down below in case you fancy having a browse on the website. And yeah, it's really nice and snuggly, this dress. The only thing I do always feel like when I wear this dress is, I don't think the indigo is the best fitting pattern for my body shape. Um, it just doesn't feel like the fit is always is perfect on me. I think when I made these dresses, um, I was a bit newer to sewing, so I wasn't so critical in terms of the fit. And I just kind of went ahead and made three without thinking maybe I could do some adjustments. But I think really I could do with quite a big forward shoulder adjustment because the seam on the shoulder does sit quite far back on me. And I always find it is a little bit tight when I move my arms forward. So although I love it, it isn't the best forever. And I think if I did revisit the indigo pattern, I might make a few tweaks to it, maybe do like a broad back adjustment and a forward shoulder adjustment and maybe make a bit of a toile of the bodice and try to get a better fit on any future versions but it doesn't stop me wearing this version I do still really like it I think I might have sized down slightly on my sizing so my size would put me pretty much as a UK 8 I think I might have maybe sized down half a size or something because I knew that it was a bit of an oversized dress and I didn't want it too oversized so I just that might have maybe exacerbated the tightness at the back a little bit and if I'd have gone for the slightly bigger size that might be slightly better but I don't know there's still quite a lot of room in it I quite like the fit I don't think I'd want it too much roomier probably but yeah it's a really nice one I've got pockets as well um, added in and it's just nice and cozy to wear I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on I think another thing I'd change if I made it again is the neckline's finished with a facing which I find a bit, I find sometimes I'm sort of trying to sort of make sure it's sitting flat and sort of pushing it back down a little bit. So I think if I made it again, I'd also maybe um, use bias binding for the neckline. Um, but again, I still love this dress. It wouldn't stop me wearing it. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. It's funny, actually, when I was, when I put this on this morning, I was thinking, I also bought the Indigo add-on pack, which you can get as a separate purchase um, that has a few more features for the Indigo included. And I, was have, I, was, I had a look online this morning, actually, I pulled up to remind myself what the add-on includes. And one thing I thought that was quite cool is it includes the option to turn it into a midi dress um, by adding an extra tier to the skirt. And I thought, since I'm enjoying midi dresses and midi skirts a bit more now, maybe I should try that option. Actually, it might be quite nice to make a midi version of the indigo dress. I think the other extras in the add-on are the option to make short sleeves, to make a button, a button back bodice. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> um, yeah, buttons down the back of the bodice, which I quite like. I quite like a button down bod bodice at the back. And also a, there's an option to add a sort of puff, elasticated puff sleeve. I probably wouldn't go for the puff sleeve, but I do like the idea of maybe making a midi length version and maybe having fun by adding a button placket down the back. So I should really get out my add-on maybe and revisit that at some point and maybe find some nice fabric to make a slightly different indigo dress. But I'll definitely have a bit of a play with the fit of the bodice first. But yeah, that is... What I'm wearing today, I think this fabric's quite nice and Christmassy, so it's making me feel a little bit festive. And I thought if I'm going along to my son's carol concert a bit later, it might be nice to wear something that feels a little bit Christmassy. So that's what I'm wearing today. And then the next thing I wanted to share was, I did actually in the end make a bit of progress on hemming my Tanita top by Five Mood last night. And um, I know I said I wasn't going to because my husband and I were going to do some Christmassy things, but actually he got stuck doing a little bit of work. So I thought while I was waiting for him, I cut out the bias binding and I started to attach it. So yeah, I made a bit of progress on that. So I'm using the bias, I'm using bias binding to hem the tenid top to be able to keep the length as much as possible, as lots of you suggested. So thank you again. Um, I found this white fabric, which I've used. I wasn't actually sure if this fabric was 100% cotton because I couldn't remember what I'd bought it for. Um, and I thought maybe if I'd bought it for something like a little cheap sort of, some, sort of I wanted some sort of fairly cheap fabric for a non-dressmaking project, I might have bought a poly cotton potentially. Um, but when I ironed it, um, I ironed it with quite a hot iron just to see what happened. And it didn't melt at all. So I think it is 
I think it is 100% cotton because I did put some quite hot iron on it um, just, just out of curiosity to see what happened. It might have been a bad idea if it actually had melted onto the iron, but thankfully it was all fine. So yeah, I cut the bias binding. I've added it on now um, and I just now need to turn it up and um, actually secure it down. But it went on nicely and I took a little video actually because I tried a different method for sort of finishing the ends of the bias binding. Often I just fold over one end and then sort of sew it over it and it doesn't give a really lovely finish. But I'd seen online a while ago a different method for finishing the bias binding to give quite a neat finish. Um, and I took a little video of how I did it. So I'll pop that in in a moment in case you're interested. Um, you may well have done it yourself before for years, but um, I just thought I'd show it anyway because I thought it was quite neat. It's kind of, this is how the bias binding ends are connected. I think it looks quite neat there. I tried to get it quite in line with the seam here. So yeah, it's all ready to turn under and then hopefully that'll give a nice finish to the bottom of my hem and won't make the top too much shorter because I've only used a very small seam allowance here um, when sewing the, the bias binding and the um, bottom of the top together. So that should be the only amount it's shortened by when I turn under. So that should be good. So it'll be nice to get that finished. So I'm hoping to finish that off today. That should be a nice quick little one. Um, yeah, definitely want to turn the bias binding under because I hadn't got anything that's suitable that might have been like a nice visible bias binding feature. So yeah, I'll turn that under um, and finish it off. So that is good. And then also last night when we were doing a bit of Christmas organisation once my husband had finished work, I discovered a few knitted Christmas items I'd really forgotten about when we got the Christmas stuff down um, earlier um, or last weekend when we put all the Christmas decorations up. And I think it's because all of our Christmas decorations are kept in the loft, but for my knitted items, I pop them at the back of one of our cupboards just to keep them um, nice and safe because um, I wasn't sure how they'd stand up to the temperatures in the loft where it can get quite cold and quite hot and I just wanted to keep them safe. So, And when I was looking in the cupboard for other bit Christmassy bits and bobs I'd stashed in there, I found them. So I thought I'd get them out and pop them up. Um, but I thought I'd show you them because um, I thought you might be interested. I think I might have shown some of them in previous years, but... I thought I'd show them anyway because I love my knitted Christmas decorations I've knitted. So there's a whole variety here and I think most of them came from this little knitting magazine here which is called King Cole Christmas Knits Book 3. Um, if it's still available I will link it down below. Um, it's a lovely knitted book. I knitted my nativity using the patterns from here but it's also got a load of other knitting patterns in so I'll show you some of the things I've knitted from this book. The first one was this really cute little um, Christmas sweater to hang on the tree. And I knitted a few of these either last year or the year before. And then I gifted a couple to my mum and sister. But I kept one for myself and I think it's really cute with this little cable knit design. And I knitted it in sparkly yarn. This is actually the yarn Elf must have borrowed to make the um, little pink sheep he knitted. This is the sparkly Christmassy yarn. So I think that is so cute. I'm going to hang that on a tree in a moment. And then also I made some Christmas sort of fairy lights, knitted fairy lights that I put usually on the mirror above our fireplace and they came from that magazine too. So these are they and again I knitted them in sparkly yarn. This was yarn I had left over from making my Three Kings from my nativity so it's nice to put it to good use um, in the navy and the red and the purple and the mustard. So yeah they were a lot of fun to knit actually um, and I'm going to pop them up too. But again they came from this magazine here. It's a really lovely magazine. There's a few things I haven't still knitted in here. These little tinsel birds. They're so sweet. I haven't done those yet. Also a, a Robin tea cosy. We don't have a teapot so I wouldn't use it but it's really adorable. So it's a really nice magazine with some really cute patterns in but yeah I'm looking forward to getting those knitted items up. And then I've got a couple more knitted tree decorations that I knitted using a different pattern. So I'll share those now too and the pattern I use for these ones is this one here. It is called Knitting Pattern 994 Christmas Tree Decorations in Double Knit. And again, if I can find this pattern online still, I'll link it down below. It is quite an old one. I've had this for quite a long time. I think this, I knitted these quite early when I was fairly new to knitting some of these. Because I remember before I used to knit, I always used to love the look of knitted tree decorations. So when I started to knit, I was so excited to be able to knit some of my own. But yes, I've knitted a few. I've got this little Father Christmas here, who's quite cute, um, just very classic in red and white. And then also a little snowman with a stripy hat and little carrot nose. I think he's quite sweet. And then little angel as well. So here's the angel. Um, yeah, they're all really cute, I think. I'm looking forward to putting them on the tree. I have knitted 
quite a few of these actually because I've done a few for friends and family as well. I think they're quite a nice Christmas gift. I've got a couple actually in here that are half finished. I've got a little Father Christmas and all I need to do with him is put his hat on and then attach a little sort of string to the top so you can pop him on the tree. So I should really finish him off. And then I've got an angel that isn't quite as near to being finished as well. Um, that I sort of must have started and then got distracted by another project. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting those all up on the tree. It's really nice to be able to put those up. I'm, I can't believe I forgot about them. So yeah, nice to get those out. So I think I'll finish up here now. I'm hoping to do a bit of sewing this morning. I definitely want to hem my tanita top wherever it's gone and maybe get a bit more sewing done too because I've got a little bit of time this morning. So I'll leave you now with, um, firstly, this little video I took of me attaching the two ends together of the bias binding to give a nice finish. And then I'll also put in a little bit of footage of me walking home from school this morning because I thought it was such a pretty morning and it looked nice outside. So I thought I'd take a little bit of footage of that too. So I'll leave you with those two videos and then I'll catch up with you a little bit later to share how I've been getting on on the sewing front. So see you in a little bit. Bye. So I've started sewing the bias tape that I made to the bottom of my tanita top. So I've sewn it right sides together along the bottom with a small seam allowance. But I haven't sewn on or attached it here where the two pieces or well, the two ends of the bias tape meet. As you can see, this is still unsewn. I wanted to give a nice neat finish here where the two pieces meet. So what I did was I've sewn the two pieces together and I've tried to sew them together so that they will be in line with this side seam of the top here. And then what I'm planning to do, now I've sort of got them measured and hopefully that should sit nicely um, and so on this final bit. What I'm planning to do is take these tails here and trim them off and then press them open and then just finish attaching the bias bindings to just sew this final bit across here. And hopefully then this seam, the bias binding will align to the side seam here and give quite a neat finish there where the two pieces of the bias binding or the two ends of the bias binding are joined. And then I can move on to sort of pressing the bias binding out and turning it under. But I thought I'd just take a little video there to show how I'm planning to attach the two ends of bias binding together. Hello, so I'm here at my sewing table now. So I thought I'd let you know how I'm getting on. First of all, I have just finished hemming my Tanita top. So that's all done. I think it looks quite nice um, and neat inside. You see a nice bias binding there on the inside. And I've had just a little rim of the outside fabric to turn under just so you can't see a peep of the white um, on the front at all. So that is all done. I need to put it on and yeah, see how it looks now. It's all done, but hopefully that should be good. So I'm pleased to have that done. And then I also just started sewing the pencil case. I've just dropped the zip on the floor, so I'll grab it and show you where I've got to. Ah. So, so far I haven't done too much. I've just attached these cute little tabs onto the end of the zip, which look really sweet. Um, and the next step is to start putting all the pencil case pieces together. So that should be good. So that's where I'm at now. I'm going to do a bit more sewing, then I'll pop one again in a bit. Bye. Again, and it's a bit later in the day now so I've done a bit more sewing got a few house jobs done had some lunch and I thought now would be a good time to pop back on and share what I've been up to on the sewing front and as you can see I've got a cardigan on over my indigo dress now because it's got a little bit chilly it's quite a chilly day even though it's a bit brighter outside this is just a very very old ready to wear cardigan it's a nice cozy one and works with so many things in my wardrobe so I'll be very sad when it eventually does wear out, but it is still going strong for the time being. Anyway, on the sewing front, I have sewn up the pencil case. So it's all done and dusted and finished now. So I thought I'd show you how it looks. So here is the little pencil case I've sewn for my daughter. So it's got this pretty 
floral fabric on the outside and then the zipper that I found in my stash that I'd obviously used in a previous project that I cut down to size. Then inside it's got this nice pink lining fabric and it's also got a bit of the pop of the pink lining fabric on the end so these little tabs at the end of the zip which I think is a really pretty little detail. So this came together really nicely this pencil case and was quite a nice speedy sew. I really enjoyed sewing it up actually it made me think I should maybe sew a few more crafty things every now and then because I do enjoy a bit of a mix um, as well as the dressmaking so yeah I'm really happy with that. I think it's quite a nice size it'll hopefully store all of my daughter's colouring pencils which was the aim for it so I think I'm going to leave her to fill it up um, when she gets home I'll give it to her a little bit later but hopefully she will like it but yeah it was a lot, a lot of fun to sew up actually very satisfying lots of nice top stitching bits and straight lines and yeah just came together nicely so I'll link the tutorial I used again down below I find it I find it a really nice clear tutorial to use so yeah that is the finished pencil case and then while I'm on now, I thought I'd also mention that today the Fold Line have sent out another code for another free PDF sewing pattern as part of their 12 days of Christmas. So I thought I'd mention it in case um, you haven't spotted it arriving amongst your emails or in case you haven't signed up to their newsletter yet. They've been doing some really nice um, discount codes and free patterns so far over the last few days. And the one today looks really good. It is called the Matchy Matchy Stash Pocket Tote Bag by Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. And I've seen a few uh, Matchy Matchy Sewing Club patterns go by on Instagram and I thought they looked quite nice, but I haven't tried one to date. But this looks like a really good one, this tote bag. I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like. So it's a fully lined tote bag with an outside pocket and a shoulder strap. And they describe it as the perfect scrap buster because you can make it in patchwork by piecing together smaller pieces of fabric. So I thought it'd be great for using up some of those offcuts from other projects um, in my stash. I thought that'd be really fun to maybe put some together to make quite a pretty patchwork bag. You can also make it in one single plain fabric as well if you want. Um, but yeah, I thought it might be a really nice gift item as well to sew up for somebody else. So I thought it'd be quite a nice pattern to have. So I'm going to go and download that in a minute. And it'll be quite nice to try out a matchy matchy sewing club pattern and see how their instructions are and how the tote bag comes together. And then I'll be able to see whether I might like to try some more of their patterns. So yeah, I thought I'd just mention that, this, that free pattern that's come out, or that discount code for the free pattern that they've um, sent out an email today. So yeah, I think I'm going to finish this video off here now, because in a little bit, I need to head up to school to go and see my son's carol concert, which will be a lovely festive way to end the week. I'm sure that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I also need to get this video all edited and ready to pop up. So I've got a few things to keep me busy. So thank you so much for joining me for another day. I hope you've had a good week and enjoyed following me along and I'll look forward to seeing you again for day nine tomorrow. So yeah, thank you again and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.